Guys, Samsung unveiled one hell of a phone in the S22 Ultra, didn't they? But how does it rank up against some of its competitors? Well, that's what we're going to do in this little series. And today we have the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So S22 Ultra first iPhone 13 Pro Max. Let's get it. Now let's start it off at the front with that beautiful display. Now iPhone have that 6.7 inch Super Retina, XDR OLED, 120 Hertz, HDR 10, and a 1200 nits peak brightness. Now Samsung, they had the 6.8 inches Dynamic AMOLED 2X, 120 Hertz, HDR 10 Plus, and 1750 nits peak brightness. That's so bright on those cloudy days. As far as the build, quite similar. Glass front, glass back, Gorilla Glass on the iPhone, Gorilla Glass Victus Plus on the Samsung. iPhone has the stainless steel frame. Well, Samsung has the aluminum frame. They're both IP68 dust and water resistant, although iPhone can go a little bit deeper. Six meters for 30 minutes compared to 1.5 meters for 30 minutes for the uh, Samsung. Either way, don't go deep sea diving with either. iPhone, of course, is on iOS 15, whereas uh, Samsung's on Android 12, but it's got its One UI 4.1. Now inside, there's the Apple A15 Bionic, and inside Samsung, well, so, you know, if you're in Europe, you're on Exynos. Otherwise, for the rest of the world, you're on Qualcomm's Snapdragon 8 Gen 4 nanometer, which looks amazing. I'm in Europe, so I am very upset. Although I who here that Exynos is now catching up. Now the camera, the camera, the camera iPhone comes with 12 megapixels all round at the back, 12 megapixel wide, 12 megapixel telephoto and 12 megapixel ultra wide. It also has the LiDAR scanner, which is for depth, really good for its face ID. Now Samsung, wow, has the 108 megapixel wide, 10 megapixel periscope telephoto, 10 megapixel telephoto and 12 megapixel ultra wide. As far as what they can shoot in, iPhone can shoot in 4K at 24, 30, 60 frames per second, 1080p in 30, 60, 120, and 240 frames per second. It also does ProWares and that cinematic mode. Samsung, on the other hand, that can do 8K at 24 frames per second, 4K at 30, 60, 1080p at 30, 60, and 240, and 720 at 960. Wow. Now, unfortunately, it has a nice gyro where it keeps it super steady, but no cinematic mode like on the iPhone 13, which I really like. Now, the front camera on the iPhone is again at 12 megapixel. It's got 4K at 24, 25, 30, 60, 1080p at 30, 60, 120, whereas on the Samsung, a whopping 14 megapixel on the front. It's also got 4K at 30, 60, and 1080p at 30. Is there a headphone jack? No. No, there isn't. There's not even no SD card on either, I'm afraid. Hey, get with the times. Those things have long gone on Samsung's and Apple's, unfortunately. Now, battery. As far as battery, there's a 4,352 milliamp non-removable battery on the iPhone and a 5,000 milliamp non-removable battery on the Samsung. As far as fast charging, 27 watts on the iPhone, 45 watts on Samsung. Crazy. Um, everything else is pretty much the same. Uh, iPhone does have its MagSafe if you're into that now let's get into price and storage because as the storage goes up so does the price let's start off with the iphone for the 128 gigabit model is 199 dollars 199 i wish it's 1099 dollars mr zero there uh for the 256 it's 1199 for the 512 gigabytes it's 1399 and for the one terabyte model it's 1599 now, all of those are six gigabytes of RAM, which is less than even the smallest offering on Samsung. Although we are talking about Apple in their ecosystem, they're just not as RAM hungry as everywhere else. Samsung, for the base model, we're looking at 1199 for the eight gigabytes of RAM and 128 gigabyte model. For moving up to the 256 and 12 gigabytes, it's 1299. For the 12 gigabytes of RAM, 512 gigabytes of storage, it's 1399. And then for the 12 gig, one terabyte of storage, it's 1599. So that's it. That's the specs on the sheet. Let me know your thoughts, which one you like and which one you're going to buy. Until next time, good. Bye.